Meghan Markle here. Today is uh, February 3rd, 2024. It is 5.32 a.m. I just did a video on our part of Pew Service where I discussed the African parks and I suggest you go to that channel and uh, check it out. Okay, the link of this and that video description. So, let's look at the, the back end of this channel before I get started. 3,758 subscribers. New subscribers, welcome. The estimate revenue... I don't know, $153.49. Analytic, okay, 2,634 views in the last 48 hours. All right, so this is what I have for you. Okay, in my last video, I only covered these, these two tweets and uh, I read that article. And this video, I have 12 tweets to share with you. And I forgot what they were. I was putting them added them throughout the day so i don't remember what they are so let's see let's go on twitter first tweet okay all right so i saw this i remember when i saw it i didn't listen to the video yet but because it's him i wasn't sure if it was in the us or in the uk and i was like let me put it so i could share it with you and share my thought Okay, so let's get started. Pierce Morgan went to the breakfast club and is trying to convince Americans that everyone in Britain said, quote, don't so be ridiculous, end quote, when Charles and Kate got named as the people who had concern. Okay, 19 seconds. A, a Dutch version of the book mm -hmm. suddenly named Charles and Kate as the people who supposedly made these racist remarks. Everyone in Britain went, oh, don't be so ridiculous, right? They're the last two people on earth who'd ever be racist or say something of a negative context about a, a, a skin color of a baby. A, a, a she's mixed race, she's American, she's a divorcee, actress. Those are four ticks. No member of the royal family, the senior members, ever thought they would see having to be ticked when it came to Harry's bride. Meghan's marrying into a family which has, to put it mildly, a dodgy track record on race. It's not Meghan Markle's problem. It's their problem. Okay. Version of the book. Ah. <sighs> Let me not spend too much time on that. But anyway, I don't know what he's making. I understand he was the one who went out and named the names. It was uh, Kate and Charles or something, I believe he said. I will never believe it. But now we can start the process of finding out if they ever got uttered, what the context was, and whether there was any racial intent at all. Like I say, I don't believe there was. The royals who are named in this book are King Charles and Catherine, Princess of Wales. And then the Dutch version was uh, quickly removed. I don't know what came up of that since it's made the noise because Omid st stuck to his gun and said, I don't speak Dutch. I only speak English. My manuscript was in English. I didn't write anything in Dutch. A lot of the speculation is that you are a mouthpiece for Harry and yeah. So what is your relationship with Harry and Meghan? I'm not their friend. I've never sat down with Meghan privately for interviews. I've never uh, exchanged information with Meghan. I'm not in their private world in any way whatsoever. You know, I work in the American press. I'm not restricted by some of the limitations of being a member of the British press and that relationship with the royal family. So I did go on television and talk about the racism that she faced. And rather than anyone wanting to talk about it or listen about it, I was called her fan, mouthpiece, cheerleader, etc. 
What did you both make of the interview? Well, first of all, congratulations on... Re- I'm just going to review your interview. It was really good. And I kind of wanted to not like him, but I was actually impressed and I thought he was quite robust in his answers around some things. Um, but when we get to the point about certain in- inaccuracies in the book and whatnot, he did say that he was... Uh, he lent on a lot of what was in the tabloid press. So he lives in America. So was he writing the book based on the tabloid press, which he says the tabloid press is full of inaccuracies, such as the point you brought up with him with Piers Morgan that flatly denies he's ever, ever had a phone call with Camilla, and he couldn't quite answer that. He said, well, my source is same. His sources are, it appears to be, if it's not Meghan and Harry, it's the tabloid newspapers. But I did think that he did have some important things to bring up, as you say, about discussion. Congratulations. I like my congratulations. This opportunity to be all obviously travel the world now. Let's just reflect on something we heard in that clip there. I have worked in and around the British media for, I think, 40, if not roughly 40 years. He refers to restrictions that the British press have with the royal family. There are no restrictions the British press have with the royal family. Hence the sort of articles that he possibly alludes to in his book and some that have gone too far. Another one of the arguments, which I don't agree with, is that the British press gave a very unfair reaction to Meghan Markle. I think they were very welcoming. There were a couple of articles that editors might want to review. But the idea that we are, in, and that, so he's in America, so he has this, un- we are all unrestricted. Nobody's not as if King Charles or the late Queen phones up an editor and says, I don't like their story. Don't complain, don't explain, has always been their mantra. So I would say, as I was rightly highlighted to Piers Morgan, that you can pull the rope from under him straight away with that. The other big issue, well, the biggest issue really is those names and this yes. issue about this book. Do you think he, and as you, do you believe him? Well, I have read, uh, listened, no. and know people <laughs> in the literary world. How can names that were never on a manu- that were allegedly never in a manuscript, end up in a book without them being inserted? Um, I know there's investigations, there's a lot of legal things around here. Piers Morgan named the two. Uh, on television last night, it's the worst kept secret because you can just Google it and find out who it is. But that is extremely damaging. That information's already out there. Um, and of course, we know the royal family cannot speak, but they, they never speak. They can't, they're not going to respond to that. But I well, cannot sure. see how it's possible without a very clear paper trail at some point when those words appear. It's an entirely new sentence and paragraph. There are, again, you can yeah. find that online with things blurred out. It's his, a sentence that it, has names in it. His reasoning, and you know, we didn't really need to go again on any more questions, because his reasoning that he doesn't speak that language and it didn't spot well, the name was written in English. So he, he did his own, his own work there. And- so whoever did that, it's not just a small little sentence. I believe from what I've heard, it's like a whole, if it's not a whole, uh, a paragraph or the whole page, that was completely not what uh, Omid did. So someone must have done that, okay? I have a sense, but I cannot prove it. But the Dutch have, you know what, let me leave that alone, okay? It's one of those, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours, and uh, they made it happen, all right? So let me read some of the comments and then move on. Uh, they literally colonizers. Of course, people believe they said it. When he says everyone, he means royalists, not actually the general population. Okay, I don't remember hearing anyone saying that. Pinocchio Pierce at it again. All uh, right, who said that? Okay, I'm not going to go through all of this. Pierce is a specialist in lying. He is a documented Meghan hater. Prince Harry just proved in court that newspapers he ran were phone hacking. Why does he get any platform to discuss them? Mm. I don't know. I'm not going to go into that. We already have an idea. Okay, so there's more. I'm moving on. I really don't want to focus too much on that. But anyway, these are receipts for the squad. Let's see here. I don't know why I'm washing, but it's next to it. So there's another one here. Now, I put this on the list. I got a little bit confused. On my yesterday's video, the set look exactly like that. I don't know if it's the same thing that I shared already or it's a different portion or a different clip within the same conversation, but uh, I didn't see that one. So I put it here so I on the list to see if it's something that I've heard already. If it's the same thing that I've heard, I just move on. You guys could watch the other video where I uh, commented on it. Let's see here. British media are saying being kind is a problem. Think about that for a second. As they invite hatred against Harry and Meghan, the people who say being kind is bad are the ones who tell you that Harry and Meghan are the ones who are bad. They are not. British media are. 
All right. Harry had already said, you know, it's not the UK who is racist. It's them, the, the media, okay, who's racist. So let's see here. Okay, so there's no comment. I might as well just go in there. Let's pause. Okay, Kevin O'Sullivan and Alex Phillips call for people to stop the infantilization of adults as uh, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle speak out about online safety. Quote, being kind will not solve the world's problem. I mean, at least that's a step. It may not solve everything, but at least it's in the right direction instead of adding to it. Oh my God, it's pathetic celebrity virtue signaling. What the hell is wrong with the UK? But for once, can they at least spread positivity? So why the hate then? Okay, I always say in order for them to understand it, they have to go through it. So this is a baggage for God. If he doesn't get it, it's something he needs to experience. That way he could at least, he could wrap his head around certain uh, things that people go through. So some empathy could instill in him if he doesn't have it. So let's listen. There will be a screenshot and it's 2 minutes and 29 seconds. All right, just the main thing is pay attention because they've had nothing but bad headlines lately. I do think it's and also, I'm just, I'm just sick of the death of celebrities going, oh, I'm anti-bullying, well, I'm against bullying. Well, well, if you guys will stop, just mind your own business. There's so many things that's going on in your own country and around the globe that you could report on. But why go on the bullying aspect of things? Disturb someone's mental well-being. Just ignore them if you don't want to talk about them. But why go on the bashing? If you cannot say anything nice, just ignore them. Oh my goodness. But let's continue with his BS. So in order for him to understand it, he has to go through it. That's a baggage for God again. We're all against bullying. It's one of those obvious things. Uh, and it's a lovely uh, publicity uh, garnering bandwagon for celebrities to do. Aren't I great? I'm against bullying. But you know uh, what? What a surprise that Harry and Meghan have climbed aboard. This, this leads me to one of my other big And by the way, I'm going to move it back slightly. By the way, Harry didn't just say this, okay? The moment he came to the U.S., there was something that he was talking about, which I made a video of. Okay, what did I call it? A, a, a father's mission or something like that. Okay? So I have that on PYTE. You guys could go and watch it. So this is not the first time Heavy have been saying it. He didn't just hop on on the bandwagon. Okay? He has been saying it when people were not making that much noise with it. So let's continue. If you nothing to do with the news or not even what's on our list, I'm going to freestyle a bit. Go on then. But this whole stuff like, oh, be kind. It, it, it's the infantilization of adults. You know, I walked by an art gallery the other day. It's, oh, unicorns and rainbows and buy these little badges and you know, wave little flags and rainbow bunting. It. It's like, you're grown-ups. Stop acting like little children. Oh, nasty, nasty words. Grow up. Yeah, and okay, fine. so what's wrong with that? To be an adult, you have to be savage? Is that what she's saying here? To be an adult, you have to be savage? There are times people are not in the mood for that. If the most time people are happy, it's when they are being silly. But whatever. But for them, to keep them going, they, it seems like they have to be savage. Oh my goodness. Baggage for God. Uh, will not solve the world's problems. It's as simple as that. I mean, you don't want to be unkind, but once again, it's like, you should be against bullying. Of course I'm against bullying. You should be kind. Of course I try to be kind. You don't have to so what are you doing now? Are you being kind by insulting him for doing what he feels like is best? Toward, you know, he has children. He has minors. So he wants to make sure his kids live in a better world. Oh my God. Just shout this rubbish from the rooftop. Wow, and that's rubbish. Else. Don't have to shout this from the rooftop. It is just... Pathetic. Yeah, he needs to shout it because your scores seem to be freaking made of rock. You cannot get anything sensible in it. You stand it... Oh my God, I hope kids don't watch the news in the UK because you have adult talking savagery here. My God, let me move it back. I talk over some of his BS anyway. Of course I'm against bullying. You should be kind. Of course I try to be kind. You don't have to shout this 
uh, rubbish from the rooftops <laughs> and then he said something else. You don't have to shout this from the rooftops. It is just pathetic celebrity virtue signalling and uh, what yeah. a surprise that uh, right in the midst of all this absolute hypocrisy is Harry and Meghan. Yeah. Um, you know, like, like How is it hypocrisy? Throughout his life, he has been bullied by people like you in the UK. So where is the hypocrisy? Because Harry is the perfect example to speak against this because he had experienced it. And this is why he removed his family away from your toxicity. The UK toxicity. Oh my Lord. Saying earlier, 160,000 pounds spent by the government, oh. your money, my money, on hiring consultants to teach public workers to spot innocent gestures that could be interpreted as showing hostility, like that one. Yeah. Rolling, you, rolling, rolling your eyes, rolling eyes, on, eyes or looking at the phone. So if, you, if you're having a, if you work for the civil service, according to some sectors of the public sector, and you're having a conversation. And you look at your phone, like we all do, let's face it. Uh, that could be uh, racism or, or sexism. What? Don't, what? Don't, I mean, don't waste our money on this. I don't think. No, I, I don't think he's ex uh, explaining. Whatever it may be he's explaining, I don't think he's explaining it correctly. You know, they always uh, bend the thing uh, in some shape or form. I don't think so. <coughs> of adults. Meanwhile, there are very, very serious things happening in the world, like MPs being hounded out of their jobs following arson attacks on their constituency offices that have to wear stab vests, that narrowly missed being murdered, and have actually carried on doing their duty and have said, I can't do this anymore. Uh, and yet we're not doing anything to tackle the underlying problems that lead us to that situation. And we've been Okay, so well, just focus on these, report on these things. Instead of Harry and Meghan, focus on these things, these MPs, the problem that's going on in the UK. Harry left. Oh, my Lord. Okay, so if they want to solve the problem of uh, bullying, shouldn't they start since the people, the kids are young? So if you have adults on national television demonstrating bullying tactic, how are the children are going to learn? So that way, in the future, your tax dollars don't have to go and teaching adults how to be sensitive. What is going on over there? You have grown adults who wasting every freaking minute of their time writing articles of stupidity, of bullying tactic, lies, manipulations, and then now you're spending millions of dollars to teach adults how to be sensible. If it starts from childhood, they're gonna meet kids at school, they're gonna be, uh, you know, be a little bit more sensitive, teach them from that level. That way when they get older, millions don't have to be spent on teaching them that they should have already known. Majority of time, kids are born to be nice. It's adult who's teaching them how to be savage. My goodness. Let me read some of the comments. Okay, the world are trying to learn, study on British people, including media. We don't understand why you people and media talk like that. What is your beef with Harry and Meghan and their Archwell Foundation on saving the kids online? What is anything to do with monarchy that make you people disgruntled? All right, let's see here. Are Brits more angry or has it has always been this way? Britain is angry and divided and the Tories don't get it. <laughs> They're creating the problem and this is what make them flourish. This is what, uh, what do you call this? Bojo's sister. She loved the way the, the paper is uh, moving forward. He doesn't want Harry to, to stop the, the bullies from the, the papers. So she likes it the way it is. I find it hard to see who is the winner here. I mean, Prince Harry goading the press is only and in forcing the press into humiliating. We're going to see some sort of state regulation of the press. I genuinely hope not. I don't want the press to be in the last chance saloon at all. I want, I want to see newspapers thrive. This is my industry and I think it's in all our interests that we have a thrive. And we've got the most wonderful uh, newspapers in the world in this country. You, you read the newspapers in, in the States or in France, they're very dull. They're not entertaining at all. I think that we can have a, both a serious and an entertaining press. 
And that's what I want to see survive. I don't want to see Prince Harry destroy the industry I love. Today's ruling in favour of Prince Harry. You have people killing themselves. Hey, the paper love that. I don't know. It seems like. Okay, what is something that a lot of people in Britain get, really? Okay, so these are the search here. What is disrespectful in the UK? I mean, uh, they're showing themselves more and more. All right, let's see here. Tell that to the parents, Kevin, whose children are dead. The same parents who the Sussexes have helped for years. Maybe you should spend time on the royals that we pay for. <clears throat> okay, why is Prince Edward off after four days abroad or when is Prince William back at work? That's that. Okay, I hope the parents whose children died won't see this crap. Okay, Harry's advocating for the online safety of children with parents who have lost their children to suicide due to cyberbullying. I'm not sure who will be upset about that other than these two losers. All right, there's this. 52% uh, of uh, 54 million UK adults want the monarchy. Okay, so these are something you could pause and read this. Okay, most of the adults in the hearing room lost their children to online bullying. Something needs to be done for a safe environment for minors. One of the things that I raised, uh, which video did I uh, talk about that? Um, I don't know, in the US, maybe people in the UK may not see that, but in the US, when you watch YouTube, some of their commercials, there's the Cindy, Cindy Hook parents who's still advocating for gun control. Who's better to talk about gun control than those parents who have been, uh, who had experienced and lost their children through gun violence? So this is the proactive that Harry is doing here through the experience of those parents who have lost their children due to cyberbullying. So by having the platform that Harry has and bring these parents along and turn heads, make people pay attention, this is why they're using the platform for this. My goodness, the UK, my God. How do you understand it to begin with? How do you know that that's a part of your destiny? Well, we don't put it this way. We don't all sit in a room with the Queen and a, and a, and a blackboard going. It's a it kind of, I don't know, I think it's, I wouldn't say it's in our blood, but at the same time, I think it's over history and watching our parents, watching our grandparents, and just learn, learning, learning our way through, through that process. I mean, Christ, I think I went to my first um, proper royal engagement at the age of four or five. Um, so you, do, you make mistakes, like we all have, um, and then slowly you find your way and you start to realize that you've got an incredible platform to, to make really positive uh, change. Did you always embrace this role and responsibility? Um, no, I don't think I don't think I understood it. I think uh, I think what uh, I think what happened to my mum probably put me a step back, thinking, well, how could someone who did, did so much for the world and did so much for everybody else could be treated like that by a certain institution? So it's it, it takes a bit of getting used to, but. As I said, you know, it's once, once you understand the privileged position that you're in, you've then got to spend the rest of your life earning that privilege and giving back and also gaining the trust and respect of the general public and then using that position for good. Okay, next tweet. Look at this Daily Fell excerpt from Sewer, who then find out her husband was a serial cheater until he died. Oh, oh my God. Let's see here. He died very suddenly of a heart attack and in shock, I started to go through his effects, desperate to find something of him to clench to. I sat on the floor, clutching his mobile phone, listening again and again to his voice on the recorded message, the tears streaming down my face. Then I started to examine the phone more closely and found all kind of messages from women I didn't know. <laughs> it's not funny, but whatever. What were these text messages and who were they from? I started to become obsessed as more and more messages rolled up. Dates, secret meetings, and pleas from faceless women to be with him. Messages telling him how much they were missing him. My heart started to race and my hands were trembling as I went on scrolling down. Then I began to recall incidents and little pointers that should have made me aware that something was going on, but which I had ignored for whatever reason. <laughs> That's because you're paying attention to things you should not be paying attention to. Harry and Meghan, who's living their lives. You know, I don't wish that on anybody, but my goodness, if these people are vile, if, I don't know, they are baggage for God. 
I don't want to put the sin on myself <laughs> because what I want to say as a human being is that good. <laughs> karma doesn't play. I don't want karma to knock at my door. <laughs> Let me be some of the comments. Okay, too busy. That's it. There's the squad saying it. Too busy living Megan's life. She forgot to live her own life. Thank you. Okay, she was the third wife. Oh my God. <laughs> the third wife. Okay, a person like that will never understand true love because her experience made her bitter. If she wasn't busy making up lies about others, she will have noticed her cheating husband. Then she heard the whispers. <laughs> oh my God. Watching Megan and Harry must sting her ego. Okay, she was the third wife. <laughs> There's me here. Expert of trash. Will never know what was or is going on in their trashy lives. <laughs> They're too busy on feed trash to the UK. <laughs> That was an hour ago when I saw it. If you look at and listen to her, you will cheat on her. To oh my God. The squad. <laughs> the squad don't play. <laughs> If you look at her and listen to her, you will cheat on her too. <laughs> She missed the telltale sign because she was too busy writing trash <laughs> about other people's lives. I'm still on the wigs, okay? You mean helmet. <laughs> Let me finish with this. Oh my God. <laughs> Let me read this and then move on. Sewer was probably one of his bit on the side when he was married to his second wife. How, <laughs> how you get... Okay, how you get them is usually how you lose them. Either that or she is bitter old hag obsessed with a couple who don't even care that she exists and hubby decided to have his fun elsewhere. <laughs> That's it. How come Megan's haters have this genetic look? Okay, I don't want to look at that. Okay, Ingrid was too busy. Mind. That's it. The squad are saying whatever was in some people's mind. <laughs> okay. Um, Ingrid was too busy minding the royal family's business so she then noticed what was happening in her own life okay as in let's be vowed to happy beautiful well adjusted and successful people because we then manage to adjust our sorry lives and have a happy meaningful life ourselves these paid trolls are triggered because they can never be the person that triggered them okay serves the right there's the check here she forgot to be a wife because she wanted what megan has mm. all right so let's move on to the next one Oh my lord, the squad of savage. If you look at her and you talk to her, you do that. Okay, let's pause. Okay, wow. Everything that Prince Harry said about Queen Camilla and Spare is being played out. She has taken over the house of Windsor. Uh, it's a minute and eight seconds. There will be a screenshot, okay? Started a campaign in the British press to pave the way for a marriage. And you wrote, I even wanted Camilla to be happy. Maybe she'd be less dangerous if she was happy. Mm -hmm. How was she dangerous? Because of the need for her to rehabilitate her image. That made her dangerous? That made her dangerous because of the connections that she was forging within the British press. And there was open willingness on both sides to trade of information. And with a family built on hierarchy, and with her on the way to being queen consort, there was going to be people or bodies left in the street because of that. <laughs> Harry says over the years, he was one of those bodies. He accuses Camilla and even his father at times of using him or William to get better tabloid coverage for themselves. We are seeing it playing out right now. There's some stuff I don't share. You know, he's, she's going on engagement while everybody else is, I don't know what happened to them. Okay, you have uh, Edward taking days off, which I just read in one of those tweets, just a mention of him. And then you have uh, the other one is sick all sort of issues going on but she's the only one who's out there flaunting it hey she's a royal she's doing engagement i don't know but let's continue harry knows what he's talking about he's the only one who was smart enough to not buy her bs whatever bs she was selling uh trying to feed him all right let's continue prince harry writes camilla quote sacrificed me on her personal pr altar If you are led to believe as a member of the family that being on the front page, having positive headlines, positive stories written about you is going to improve your reputation or increase the chances of you being accepted as monarch by the British public, then that's what you're going to do. You wrote that she started a campaign in the British press there? to pave the way for a marriage. And you wrote, 
I even wanted Camilla to be happy. Yeah, it's playing over. All right, so let's see what's this here. Okay, for any of the palace age who have helped to improve the image of Camilla, 76, and the public consciousness, it must have been something to behold. Eventually, it was felt that there had been a respectable amount of pap to allow the country to move on. Campaign Camilla was already underway, with Camilla building up her work with the National uh, Osteoporosis Society, the condition suffered by her mother, Mark Boland, the PO executive, hired as an assistant private secretary to Charles in 1996, started to introduce Camilla to newspaper editors and others seen to be influential when it came to the public opinion. 25 years later, the PR coup has enabled Camilla to face the world alone while so many members of the royal family are off duty. When was that? Friday 2, 2024. Oh shit, that was yesterday. This was written yesterday. <sighs> oh, where, where was it? From where? Uh, by Kate Menzi. Mm. Okay, a real evil stepmother. She is the only one standing. Her face is on every paper. She is very dangerous. I'm telling you. All right, let's see here. In reality, though, she doesn't actually have any power, right? She doesn't care. She's got the crown. She's... I don't know. People like this who is so obsessed with certain things, you will never understand their mindset. Only what they see in their mind that they're going after. And uh, I don't want to say what I'm really thinking. And let me just leave it as that. In reality though, she doesn't have, she doesn't actually have any power, right? Before going to hospital, then Charles had everything over to Anne as his proxy or whatever they call it. Okay, it isn't really about power because her husband is on board with her ideology. She wants to be the face of the firm. <laughs> okay, last while while we're standing. <laughs> okay, it is unbelievable that she has emerged as the face of the firm. Something really bad happening to, uh, what is it, uh, Bond? What is that? Skull and Bond? Um, I want to believe that she was behind what is currently going on with them. Mm, whatever. So that's me here. Okay, Harry told us his belief of the three and the marriage and said, quote, please proceed. <laughs> I'm just making fun of it in a way. All right, the witch said, okay. <laughs> That's the three and the marriage still. The witch said, okay, let me show you how it's done. Okay, we're seeing it being played out right in front of our eyes. She has zero shame in her game. A game the British media love. As Joseph. All right, so that's that here. <laughs> Somebody re uh, retweeted it. All right, that's where she's saying this is the thing that she love. You know, for the sake of this video, let me put it. There'll be screenshot, okay? I play this so many times. Let me read this too, and after the video, I'll move on. Okay, she wants something, and I did mention that before the coronation, her son is already taking over royal duties, ex-husband attending an event on her behalf. Watch and see. Okay, what a shame. All right, so let's listen to this, and then we'll move to the next one. I find it hard to see who is the winner here. I mean... Prince Harry goading the press is only and, and forcing the press into humiliating payouts is not going to be particularly good for, for the Sussexes. And it's certainly not great for the <coughs> press, which is on the hook. I think, I think the total payouts for phone hacking and other illegal uh, inf information gathering is up to a billion. And there are many, many more cases to try. So my my point about all this is I think we only have losers here and it's in all our interests that we have a strong, vigorous and honest press. And if it was strong, vigorous and honest, I agree that the press would have reported more on the judgment, the Prince Harry judgment that came through on Friday than it did. It was basically a broadcast story far more than it was a print story. Uh, the paper f uh, decided not to broadcast it because it was not in their favor. If they had won the case, okay, and Harry lost, they wouldn't mention it. They purposely decided not to share it because it was not in their best interest. And of course, the print and broadcast are in competition, so you can sort of understand that. Um, so my question is, who who wins out of this? Has the print has Prince Harry done the press lasting damage? Do you think that as a result? of the the judgment against that went against mirror group newspapers we're going to see some sort of state regulation of the press i genuinely hope not 
I don't want the press to be in the last chance saloon at all. <laughs> I want I want to see newspapers thrive. This is my industry and I think it's in all our interests that we have a thrive and we've got the most wonderful uh, newspapers in the world in this country. You you read the newspapers in in the states or in France, they're very dull. They're not entertaining at all. And this is what Camilla's doing right now, entertaining the papers. Uh, I don't know. Uh, how the UK is uh, gobbling up this nonsense that they are uh, displaying here. All right? Entertaining. Putting a, a script out there for the people. So this is what she wants. So she's being entertained by this BS that's going on. I think that we can have a, both a serious and an entertaining press. And that's what I want to see survive. I don't want to see Prince Harry destroy the industry I love. Well, if they I leave him alone... Okay, Harry will have no problem with the paper, but they refuse to report the facts. They make up stories about him. Okay, these things hurt people's lives. Okay, you could have your entertaining without the cost of people's life. People go to the movie for entertainment. People read books for their own pleasure. So we do not need the papers to entertain people at the cost of real people. Okay, if they report the facts, then that's fine. But don't make up stuff. And then to laugh at people, at your, you know, to enjoy yourself while the other people you, you know, you reporting on are suffering. Okay, so let's move on. Next tweet. All right. Oh my God. Phew. Okay. Don't know why I have this strange feeling. Kate is not coming back, nor William will ever be king. 2024 is going to be the very interesting for the royal family, the firm, Queen Camilla. Oh my goodness. What is it? The commemoration of, what is it, 850 years of dedicated service. Oh my God, St. John Foundation. Whew, that smile is very scary. Uh, let's see. Oh my God. So that's the thing here. Okay, but look, she forgot about Anne. Okay, Camilla heartbreak, the rule giving Princess Anne power over Camilla when Charles absent. Yeah, she's not a blood uh, royal. Okay, Anne better have a foot. <laughs> I'm telling you, all the, they want people to be entertained. So, hey, I can't respond to this in a uh, good faith knowing, uh, good faith good knowing what the, the nonsense they're displaying. <clears throat> There's me here. Okay, Anne better have a food taster that to be in a marriage better go take care of her husband balls. I put all sort of balls. Okay, she's been writing him. <laughs> I'm waiting for Anne. Okay, how about you first check the date of the article? Eh, that was before Charles became king. I don't give a F. It's still the same thing. All right, she's not blood royal, even though they claim she's uh, what is it, the uh, queen or whatever. Uh, uh, uh. All right, uh, King of Isle being forced out, speculation of Charles as the likely candidate for abdication. Nostradamus' words state that the King of the Isle, who went through a controversial divorce. Oh, let's do this. Where is it? <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> I like to respond and then ignore them. I don't want to hear the nonsense. All right. Um... Uh, King of Isles being forced out, speculation of Charles as the likely candidate for abdication. Nostradamus' words state that King of the Isle, who went through a controversial divorce, will be driven out by force and replaced by one who will have no mark of a king. We shall see. Okay, I don't think Harry wants to be there. Okay, uh, maybe it's... <laughs> oh my God, why did Andrew come on top of my head? Because Harry the if it's to save the country, maybe, but I don't think Harry wants that. Okay, I said a long time ago, if I was one of the power players in the UK and I am greedy with an evil heart to Charles, quote, it's nothing personal, it's just business. To William, it's nothing personal, it's just business. To Harry, we need to talk. All right, so there's that here. Okay, the Rottweiler is now in full charge. That's what I see here. 2024 stacked up. There's the popcorn here. Let's move on. Right, let's read this since it's pop up. 
Okay, does Camilla actually work at looking so cunning and conniving or is this just the way she always looked? Because she sure looked like the evil stepmother to me. I'm telling you, that inner evilness came out, okay? Uh, I have a feeling William gave her divorce papers over Christmas. Okay, he's cool enough to give her those divorce papers during Christmas time to be in the firm institution. It appears you have to be a cold-hearted princess, Diana, Harry and Eugenie are not cold hearted like some of the others. All right, let's go to the next one. Okay, so there's that. I think the Rottweiler feared the ginger avenger like she feared his grandfather. Oh, was, was she? Okay, she can't play him like a fiddle like she played his father and brother with uh, the added confidence his wife gave him. She saw him as her biggest threat, so she used the other two to push him out of the UK. I think so too. Uh, my comment is somewhere here. Where is it? There it is here. Okay. They didn't push him out. I mean, then they tell his wife to go back. Piers, if, you don't, if you want to be private, go back to America and live privately. It's pretty straightforward. To America and at the same time, he was being hammered all over. No family member were there to stick by him. The queen was there, but I don't know what the queen was doing. Okay. They literally told his wife to leave. Okay, um, they then push him out. The boy wouldn't become a success story. And uh, that's what bothering the leftovers that he doesn't need them to shine. Okay, this part I agree. Yes, they push him out. Okay, but he was pushed out. That's it. Yeah, they push him out. Okay, it is also true that he wanted to leave. So the fact they targeted his wife made it much earlier for him to do so. I think so. I agree with, uh, with that. But this one is just some part of it. Okay, him being pushed out is the best thing that could have happened because now the entire world see the British royal family and taxi British media for what they are. Exactly. Yeah, they're proving Harry right every time. Okay, you know, I don't know uh, if people in the US, even though you were not into the royal family, but occasionally you see stories about them. I remember seeing videos of when uh, William was heading to school or something they saying how smart he was and all of this you know the brilliant thing when every time they talk about Harry a little bit later on especially the Vegas thing and all of that they're always making him seem like uh, he's the in a negative aspect of thing but now we're seeing completely opposite Harry was the brain of the two brothers uh, right? It's like uh, William was too happy to come out first and he forgot his brain behind and Harry pick it up. <laughs> uh, that's a stupid thought, but whatever. All right, so there's me here. Did I read that? I'm pretty sure she is one of the main reasons he always wanted out, but she certainly made it as hostile as she could and hope he will go. Attacking his wife and child was, in my opinion, the straw that broke the camel's back. He wasn't going to tolerate that anymore. Uh, look at this, that uh, Jeremy, okay, it was a couple days before some holiday, they had some meeting, and next thing you know, he wrote the piece about dragging her, you know, her body, you know, so I don't even need to repeat that thing. All right, so, uh, you know, she's a baguette for God. That's all I know, a huge baguette. Okay, I hope all the apostles, all the angels help carry that baggage and bring it to God and to get justice because this is a huge task. All right, there's me here. Yes, that's why they wanted 28 days advance notice when, oh, let me pause it. These things usually, okay. Yes, I'm responding to the original tweet here. I think Wackwaller fear the ginger avenger. Okay, this part here. And there I am. Yes, that's why they wanted 28 day advance notice when he comes to the UK. In my humble opinion, I think she tried to BS him. Whatever nonsense she tried to put in his head. It didn't work. But her BS worked on everyone else. And Harry told the world her tactics, bodies on the street. Okay, and she's showing the world exactly what Harry said. Okay, so there's this here. 35 seconds and then I move. Okay, somebody respond and then I'll read that. Okay, let's read. I mean, let's listen. That she started a campaign in the British press to pave the way for a marriage. And you wrote, I even wanted Camilla to be happy. Maybe she'd be less dangerous if she was happy. Mm -hmm. How was she dangerous? Because of the need for her to rehabilitate her image. That made her dangerous? That made her dangerous because of the connections that she was forging within the British press. And there was 
open willingness on both sides to trade of information. And with a family built on hierarchy, and with her on the way to being queen consort, there was going to be people <laughs> or bodies left in the street because of that. Okay. So well, that she started a campaign oh, oh, in the British press. That's done. Okay, so this is the response here. The rehab didn't work. <laughs> I'm talking, that's uh, Camilla. Most people despise Camilla and hate Chuck for choosing her. There was no love story with these two skanks. <laughs> Chuck had multiple mistresses. I will never forgive or forget what they did to Diana and her sons. Camilla is pure evil. Mm -hmm. Let's see this one and then that's it. Absolutely. She wanted Megan and Harry out of the way. That's why she used her friend to bash them every day. Pierce Clarkson, yeah, there it is. Pierce Clarkson, Dicky, Tommy, Levine, Carol, Vine, ITV, Breakfast Team, Express, and uh, the rest of the British media. She managed with intent a woman to watch. You know, the, I'm just saying baggage for God. Next tweet. Okay, let's pause. Interesting to see how some royal rats are trying to turn down their vile attack toward the Sussexes so that their favorite doesn't get dragged. I will continue to watch this space, but know this, you can trick and confuse gullible people on here, but not me. We see you. So, in other words, um, there was some, I think it's one of the tweets where all of a sudden uh, they're trying to sound nice or something because right now, People, uh, some people were dragging, uh, you know, whatever, the royal family, Kate and William and all of that. So they want to put the face like they know, they're they nice to Megan. <laughs> like one tweet is going to erase everything. All right, so let's read this. Today is not going to be the day the royal voter pretends at uh, civility toward Harry and Megan prevent me from dragging princess <laughs> code dress and prince wants a divorce. Game recognizes this game. <laughs> I see you clearly. Oh my God. Exactly. They think people are fools. I kind of think we may have some planted among us to confuse us. Yeah. I think I posted something on my community board for you guys. Yes, I spot one for sure. Yeah. Keep your friends close and the enemies closer. Yeah. I mean, you don't know who's behind those uh, accounts. They pretend to be nice, but once their blueprint don't work, hey, they unleash their nonsense. That's why. Okay, we have received from 2016, let them try and rewrite history. Okay, that's right. There's this here, that's me. Oh, it's easy. The Sussex squad has received of the Royal Rats vile tweet. We just have to repeat the same exact BS they said back at them. They must experience their own medicine. If they felt it was good to spit out, it must be good to throw it right back at them. It was fun and games to them. There's that. Yes, this, them, right? They think they're slick. We see what they are doing and it won't work. Okay, that's why. Okay, so let's go to the next one. I need to finish. There's some place I have to go later. I have four more tweets. Okay, karma is a bitch and revenge is a dish best served cold. Okay, so there's this here. Anger of palace officials over made up reports that the princess of Wales was in great danger after surgery. So that was published yesterday. To February 2024. Okay, the Princess of Well is making good progress after undergoing surgery. This is someone that I black. What did it say here? Ah, surgery, laugh, and Nostradamus. <laughs> There's that here. Okay, people are laughing. Okay, a two weeks hospital stay and three months of duties means a dangerous surgery occurred. Either that or she's very lazy. I've had 13 surgeries. Oh my goodness. 13 surgeries. I know all the risk factors. They are recovering up shit. Uh, why? What surgery? Uh, there was never any surgery. LOL. <laughs> oh my God. What was it? I think there were two different tweets. First was from the Spanish who reported something. And then another tweet that I came across, I believe the Dutch uh, sort of mirroring what the Spanish were saying. So we don't know. And keep in mind, these two countries are countries that have a monarchies. Okay. <laughs> There's the laugh here. It probably something to scratch each other's back. Okay. A two weeks hospital. Okay. I read this. What surgery? Okay. So what if I am referring to the tabloid? Okay. There's me here. The entertainment story already been written. This is the groundwork for when she can be seen again. She will have a foundation of BS to spew to the peasant. Well, for the sake of her kids, glad she's okay. Her kids generation better not get involved with them. Kids learn from Papa and Mama. 
Okay, just don't expose her to sunlight. <laughs> that kind of comment you come across. Really? There's that here. So let's go to the next tweet. <laughs> don't expose her to sunlight. Next one. There's that. Yeah, I remember the journalist that said the British royal family only take the time to respond to the media when a rumor is true. Okay, fury of palace officials over made up, there's a quote here, made up claims about Princess of Wales surgery aired on Spanish news program. This is what I was telling you. And it also uh, mentioned on, I think, the Dutch paper, right? Anger of palace officials over made up reports that the Princess of Wales was in whatever. Okay, but if she wasn't seriously ill, why was she in the hospital for two weeks and will be out for three months? They can they can have it both ways. We already know Kate Middleton is sick. There's an eye here. They could, they could come clean if they don't want to speculate. Yeah, all they have to have, we do not know. The little thing that they lie about, it's, you just have to scratch your head. Was this necessary? Okay, now you have to make up lie after lie to cover lie again. I mean whatever okay throw stone and hog pen the first one it hits squills okay keep them coming i don't black you because you give some comedic relief you have the greatest sense of humor okay wow uh they said the common word i also learned that the british media sell stories to journalists and other countries about the royal family when they are forbidden to run the story in the uk who knows i don't know they are rattled by the spanish media for reporting the truth Okay, except the palace hasn't responded. I mean, you, you, you think they're going to make a press conference and respond? Harry already told us how they operate. They brief the papers and then the papers say eh, a source or something. Okay, quote, palace officials are understood to be furious after a Spanish news program air spurious claim about the health of the Princess of Wales. The key word being understood is speculation to sell so-called news. Okay, whatever. Whoever take uh, the the UK paper at face values, whatever. I'm just sharing this with you. Let's move on to the next one. I need to finish. Two more after that one. Why did it take five days for KP to dispel this rumor? And most importantly, where is the threat of legal action? KD was outed as the royal racist and it took five seconds for the palace to say they're considering legal action. My, my, my. Okay, so there's People Magazine here. Um, palace denies reports that Kate Middleton was in a coma after abdominal surgery. Total nonsense. Uh, the Princess of Wales is currently recovering at home following an abdominal surgery last month. There's that here. Kate Middleton, aka Kate Mambo. Okay. Okay, yep. And if you have school aged kids, wouldn't you be fearful of them hearing stuff like this? That's why I think it's strange no legal threats have been made, but the minions were quick to say they might sue over the racism allegation. To me, the common shit is just as damaging. Okay. Let's finish what's there and then move on. Interesting that they went to tabloid entertainment rag rather than a real paper. <laughs> There's that here. Let's go to the next one. Okay, one more and then that's it. <laughs> Let's pause. The more unhinged the press gets, the more I tend to believe rumors that the angry man did something to the man can. <laughs> The angry man. Every time I read this, I start laughing. The more that the angry man did something to the mannequin. All right, there's that. Yeah, pretty much. There's that. There is something weird going on. There's me laughing about it. The angry man. Okay, I think they're itching to spill the beans or tea. All right, this GIF, LOL. Candid makes good memes. Okay, there's a the laugh. This evening is pretty bad. All the trolls are out. <laughs> All right, this is my last one. I don't think I'm going to record for PYTE because I need to, it's 620 and then 9 o'clock we need to get going and then let me get started with at least one edit. Next tweet. Interesting that Kate Middleton had what, uh, interesting that Kate Middleton had what appeared to be an emergency blood delivery. Okay, so let's see here. Britain Health Royals Kate, police officers stand guard outside the entrance to London Clinic in London on January 18, 2024, where Britain's Catherine Princess of Wales underwent surgery. Britain's Catherine's Princess of Wales is facing up to two weeks in hospital after ongoing successful abdominal surgery, Kensington Palace announced on January 17. 
Okay, let me leave my <laughs> thought on that alone. So there's this here, there's the blood here. All right, so let's read some of the comments. Okay, very interesting. Wow, that is some real detective work right here. Okay, wow, excellent catch. That's an ad. That was it. Okay, so we don't know. Whatever. Oh, there's more, there's more, there's more, there's more. I almost missed that. Okay, blood donation vehicles are allowed the use of blue light and siren, known commonly blues and twos, for the use of emergency blood transport. In some cases, this will also require the use of a police escort for the transporting vehicle and other to safely and quickly navigate major road junction. Okay, NHS blood and transplant. Okay, so that is it. I do not have any more. What is this? Expert of trash. Yes, that's why they want 28 days. Okay, something like that will never leak. Okay, let's cover this. These are some stuff that I respond to and they liked it. Okay, how can uh, Prince Harry put an end to something that Meghan Marco never planned? Okay, how does that go? Make it up stories about Harry and Meghan, then feed money themselves with that made up stories by writing multiple articles from that made up line. All right, so there's that here. Something like that will never be leaked of all people, the royal rats. They probably know about the story that Harry didn't include and spare. Why are they but hurt about him? Okay, so let's leave that on. This is what uh, I was making reference. Prince Harry allegedly put an end to Meghan Markle's memoir plans. Okay, so allegedly. There's the key part here. Allegedly. They don't know shit. All right, let's go back. This one. Expert of trash. I think I respond to that already. All right. So m please take a moment to subscribe, like, and share. If you want to support this channel, there's a PayPal link and a Cash App link in the description. You could donate. Those who have donated, thank you. All right. I, I, I need to make a, a thumbnails for this. So that is it. I don't do prayers for the left behind us. All I have to say is baggage for God. This is the prayer. All right. So that's it. May God continue to protect Harry and Megan and their little family. That is it. Thank you for watching. privilege to be with all of you today. You know, we want we ask for forgiveness and uh, and please come back.
together. And if I may speak personally, we are all in this together. Because asking for help was one of the best decisions that I ever made. You will be continually amazed how life changes for the better.